All right, this is 210 inverses of exponential functions. So we are about to review a lot of stuff with logs, um, but mostly the relationship between a log and an exponential function. So we are like bridging that gap between what we were, what the first part of unit two, which was a lot of exponential stuff, into log stuff. So if you were to look at these graphs, the one on the left is your exponential graph, and this is the graph of f of x equals 3 to the x. And you look at the graph on the right, this is the graph of g of x equals log base 3 of x. There are some, there are some similarities in these, and there are obviously some differences. The overall shape, if you look at it, is ex almost exactly the same. It's the direction that it faces that's different. So if you think about it as I plug an exponent into something that is exponential, if the base is a whole number, because obviously it changes if not, that it would start off very, very small. If I had negative something that's huge, it would be a fraction with the base of 3 being raised to the higher number. And the, the higher you raise a fraction to, the smaller it is, so it gets closer and closer to 0. And then as you hit 0, it's 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. And then after that, it would grow exponentially. So 3 to the first is going to be at 3. This is going by 2. So let's say this is 1. 3 to the first would be at 3. 3 to the second would be at 9. So you'd, up, you'd be up here, okay? But the overall curve of it goes close to a horizontal asymptote and then increases without bound. A log function, and we're going to talk about like strategies to graphing this because there's more than one, but a log function is the inverse of this. If I flip it over the y equals x line, which would be here, which you'll see in a second, okay, I would end up with log of the same base, and a log function hugs a vertical asymptote. It still grows without bound, okay, but your growth is a smaller gain because you're not raising it exponentially. But if you look, you've got an x-intercept at 1, 0. You've got a coordinate point, and it's hard to see, but it's 3, 1. And you'd have a coordinate point at 9, 2. So if I looked at just those three, 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 9, what do we notice about the x and y relationship? They're the inverse. You take your x's and your y's, and you switch them. So one strategy to graphing logs is that you can graph the exponential inverse of it and then flip your x and y values. That's one approach. The other approach is to plug in for y instead of x. So I'll teach you both ways. You get to choose both ways. There's times when one is easier over the other, so it's good to understand both. But you have to understand at least that concept. Okay. Now look at your input and your outputs. If I look at the inputs, I'm, and I'll actually, we're going to do this on the next screen in a, in a T-chart, but if I look at the inputs on the exponential function, what are the inputs, the x or the y? X. So look at the inputs on the exponential function. What do you notice about them? 0 to 1 to 2. What? You're adding 1 to each one. They're increasing additively is what we call that, right? It goes up by 1. What do you notice about the outputs on that? They're multiplying by 3. We call that multiplicatively. So they are changing multiplicatively by 3. Okay. Now compare that to the log one. Look at your x or your input. What's happening? That one's changing multiplicatively by 3. And the input, I mean the output, sorry, additively by 1. So they are the reverse. Okay. So we're going to learn one. The very first thing is how do I determine if something is exponential or log based on coordinate points? And that's the pattern you're looking for. Now let's talk about your domain and range. If I look at the one on the left, what's my domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the range here? Good. Zero to positive infinity, right? Never touches zero, so it gets parentheses. Now go to the one on the right. What's your domain? Zero to positive infinity, what's your range? Negative infinity to positive infinity. God bless you. Does it make sense that those are switched? Yes, because they are inverses of each other. On the left, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. What do we think is going to happen on the right? A vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So the characteristics of one flip because they are inverses of each other. 
So, like, what is it asking? Like, what's the You'll see. It'll ask a couple of different things. Okay. Like, given it's exponential, tell us about either the horizontal asymptote, tell us about the domain, tell us about the range. Or it will say something is a, um, <laughs> is a log function. What is its range? And every log function would have negative infinity to positive infinity. And then if it gave you the equation, you would have to know how to adjust to find the domain. Well, we have to, like, prove that they're inverses. Oh, yeah. Just flip ahead a couple slides. And then we... And then find the inverse. Yeah, and then compare. Th it has to have all three things. No, 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 no. We'll do the f of g and g of f, and they should both result in an x. Oh, okay. Yeah. Valeska. Can you repeat what you said about the horizontal vertical asymptote? So on, a, on an exponential function, it has a horizontal asymptote. And the parent function, which is what this one would be, it's at zero. That will shift if we get a, a vertical shift. If I add a number after the exponent, it would shift my vertical asymptote. Okay? Whereas the horizontal, I mean, the, a log function has a vertical asymptote. And it's at zero, and it shifts with a horizontal shift. So it will shift with something inside the parentheses like that. We're going to review all that. Yeah. No, the, no, there's no slant asymptote. Slant asymptote only comes with a um, rational function. So you have an X in the top and an X in the bottom. All right. So let's, we kind of did this already. But if we compare our inputs and our outputs, like if I had a chart that just said F of X equals 3 to the X, and without even looking at your graph, you could find your coordinate points. I could plug in, well, let's do the same ones we did. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'll even add the negative 1 because there's one more. And we would plug these points in. So 3 to the negative 1 is what? 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first is 3. And 3 to the second is 9. Now, this is where logs get weird. First of all, if I knew they were inverses already, I could just invert those points, right? But what if I don't know the, it, what if I don't have the inverse, right? Then the log, you really have two options. One is make it its inverse. How do we find an inverse of a function? So, switch, do the y, switch the y and the x, solve for the new y, right? So that's how you would find the inverse. So it would look something like this. y equals log base 3 of x. We would switch the x and the y. Then... Conver Wait, I switched the x, but not the y. And then this converts to exponential. The 3 picks up the x and leaves the y. So g negative 1 of x is 3 to the x. If it's just the parent function, if it's literally just 3 to the x or log base 3 to the x, you can just know that the inverse would be log base, like the, the inverse of log base 3 would be x to the third. So it's the reverse of this. But there are going to be things multiplied on the front. There are things going to be added inside parentheses. There are going to be things added and subtracted at the end. So it's not always that obvious. So again, there's two methods to finding these points. This is the first. Find the inverse, then find the coordinate points, and then switch them. So it would be 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, The second option, and the more complicated the log gets, in my opinion, the easier it is to do it this way. If it's basic like that, you could just find the inverse and then switch it. That's not so bad. But when we start to have a vertical shift or a reflection or a horizontal shift or a stretch, right, then it gets a little bit more complicated. So your other option is to take that log function, which was y equals log base 3 of x, convert it to exponential without finding the inverse. So 3 to the y would equal x, and then plug in for y instead of x. So if I did that, I would do negative 1, 0, 1, 2 as the y, and I'd get two, 3 to the negative 1, which is 1 third, 3 to the 0, which is 1, 3 to the first, which is 3, and 3 to the second, which is 9. So two different ways to graph, and to be honest, the best option is to know both because sometimes it's easier to do the first and sometimes it's easier to do the second. So we're going to dive deeper into graphing tomorrow. Today is kind of like just scratching the surface and understanding what happens to these graphs.
So again, I said this on the last slide, but if you see, it says in an exponential function, the in the inputs increase additively. The if the increase as sorry as the inputs increase additively, the outputs increase multiplicatively. And for a log function, as the outputs are increasing additively, the inputs are increasing multiplicatively. Is that always true for just this one? It's true for all of them. Okay. Yep. It, and you don't even have to have the inverse to know that. You literally might be given, which you'll see in a second, this chart without the equation, obviously. And you have to compare the x's and the y's, which ones are going up additively and which ones are going up multiplicatively. And then that would determine if it's exponential or log. So that's what <coughs> these looks like. Example one says describe the function as exponential or log, then find the points for its inverse g of x. So look at one. Compare your x or your input and your y or your output. What's happening to the x's? These are multiplicatively, right? This is times three, times three, times three. The ones on the right are adding one, adding one, adding one. So if the input is multiplicative and the output is additive, what is this? Log. And then to find its inverse, you just switch them. Oh, this should say, yeah. Oh, no, that's right. It's 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 9, 3, 27. So it's saying x, or the inverse is g of x. It would be the same thing if I said f negative 1 of x. All right, now go to 2. What's happening to the inputs? Additively by 1. The outputs multiplicatively, good, by 5. <coughs> so this is exponential. And we flip them. So what's going what do you think is going to happen now when we have our model choices? We have now we have quadratic, we have cubic, we have quartic. Well, we haven't really covered quartic yet, but we have exponential and now we will have log. Yeah. Sure. Can you repeat that? Yeah, so like yesterday, like think about your test, right? Here's here's a set of a chart of data. Oh, okay. You can choose, is it linear? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? Is it exponential? Is it log? Do we have to compare the R to the H value? You can. Well, you, you also could look at the additive and multiplicative relationship. Oh, yeah. can we still go up shape? Or? Can you still go up shape? Oh, off shape? E. Think what about a log. Mean? If it's cut, it's going to look a lot like a line. Oh, so if the X, if we can tell from the... From the, uh, from the chart, like, if, it's, if it's additive and then the y's are multiplicative. Other way around. Then it'd be log. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, let's say the x is additive, but the y isn't multiplicative, then what? Well, then you have to figure out what model it is. Okay. Yeah. We're still doing this. F of g of x and g of f of x. And our goal is to get what? Just x. Okay. All right, so for the first one, we're taking this and we're plugging it into the exponent. So 2 to the 3 times log base 2 of x over 3. Now what happens in my exponent? What? Good. The 3s cancel. Multiplying and dividing, right? They cancel out. And I get 2 log base 2 of x. And when the base on the exponent is the same as the base uh, of the exponential function, so when the base here is the same as this, they cancel and leave you what's left. Good. Mm -hmm. So, I have well, two. So, why is it equal to x? Like, how do we know it's equal to x? Every inverse, every composite function of inverses results in x. It's just x. It, it, That's just something we gotta know forever. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then. If they're inverses, f <laughs> of this and this of f always simplify to x. And then if one is an inverse, will the other one be an inverse? Sometimes there are cases in which it doesn't work, so you have to check both. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to go the other way around. Now I'm taking the F and plugging it into the G. So this guy gets plugged in here. And I get 3 times log base 2 of 2 to the X over 3. With me so far? Yeah? 
Okay. Now, again, the base on the log and the base on the exponential function are the same. They're just reverse locations. But if this is the same as this, you cancel it out and you keep the exponent. So 3 times x over 3 becomes x. x. Do you what? One, one says show. That's basically telling you, hint, hint, it is. And your answer should be X. Your work is just your proof. Then you get questions. So, okay. So we, oops. Okay, we did that one. Now the question says determine if it was. So if that was the question on that last one, we would have said yes, it is the inverse. Go. The second one, now we have to test it out, right? So this is the one we actually originally started. So we're doing f of g of x, and we're doing g of f of x. If either of them do not result in x, then my answer is no. So g of f of x gets plugged in. This guy goes in here. So 2 to the 3 times, 3 times log base 2 of x. And you can multiply out the front. You can make that 9 log 2x to simplify it. The base on the exponential function is the same as the base on the log. It cancels it out. And what's left is 9 times x or 9x. Is that x? No. no. So I literally can stop here and say they are not inverses. If you want to keep going, and we're going to review the next steps because I'll show you. But if you wanted to keep going to double check, then I would take the f and I would plug it in here. I'd get 3 times log base 2 of 2 to the 3x. And log base 2 and 2 cancel. I'd get 3 times 3x left, which is 9x. That is not x. So even though they are the same, it, it does not mean that they're an inverse. It has to be just x by itself. Daniela. What did you do after 9 log 2 to the 9 log 2x? Here? Yeah. So the base on the exponential function is the same as the base on the log. They literally cancel each other out. And what's left becomes your simplified expression. Okay. Yeah. When you have your log base 2 of 2 base. All right. This one says find the inverse. So now we're going to actually go through the motions of finding the inverse. So our first step is replace f of x with y. Our second step is switch the x and the y. And our third step is to solve for that y. So this is where it gets a little weird and there's a couple different things you can do. I can take just the right side and try to make a log out of it. Or if you remember from Algebra 2, when we couldn't change the base to be the same on either side, we, we LN'd it or we can log it. So I could LN this, but it's not going to help me try to find the inverse. An LN would be if I had a calculator and I was trying to solve this, then I would LN both sides. There's still two variables, so that's not my approach this time. So I am going to log both sides, but I, am, I can do that with any log. So I'm going to log with the base of that exponential function so that it cancels out. So when you have an exponential function and you want to get the exponent out of it, when you're trying to solve for something there, then I literally can log, like I'm making it a verb. I'm going to log both sides of these equations, but I want to log it with the base of the exponential function. So I'm going to write log base 2 of x equals log base 2 of 2 to the y. I am logging both sides of the equation. We did this with ln a lot last year. But you can do it with any log. You did. You did for sure. Yeah. So yes, log base 2 of 2y becomes what? Just y. Because it cancels out. And then the last thing you have to do, because it would be wrong without it, is make this what? f negative 1 of x equals log base 2 of x. So again, when they are simple, you can just literally like switch it. The 2 becomes the base and the x becomes there. But they're not always going to be that simple. <coughs> Valeska. How do you know what the base is? The, you want the base of the log to match the base of the exponential function. Okay. Otherwise, it won't cancel out. So if that base was 3, I'd make it log base 3. If it was base 5, I'd make it log base 5. If the exponent was a fraction, could you just divide the log by the number? If the exponent was a fraction, on the right-hand side, you'd get y over something. Is that what you mean? And then you'd multiply the log by that base. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, go to B. 
So x equals, I'm skipping the step of replacing the y, and I'm going to straight to switching it. x equals 4 log base 3 of y. Now, if I have a log in my answer, and I want to separate it from what's next to it, I can just convert it to exponential. So I can have the 3 pick up the other side. But I cannot do that until the log is by itself. So my first step is divide both sides by 4. And I get x over 4 equals log base 3 of y. And then the y picks up, I mean the 3 picks up, the x over 4. And the log is gone. And then my last step is make that. This is g of x, so g negative 1. So if I start with log, I'm converting to exponential. If I start with exponential, I'm bringing in the log. Questions? How did you get it to move from um, the log? When you have a log isolated, you're literally just, God bless you, converting it to exponential. The base picks up the other side and drops off, leaving what's left. So we don't divide by log three. You can't divide by log 3. So log 3 and y are not being multiplied. You're finding log base 3 of y. So this is not multiplication. Does that make sense? A number on the front, that's multiplication. But you can't. These are these are a partner until you convert it to exponential, then they break apart. And then if it had like lo the log base three of y with an exponent, could we move it to the front and then divide? Yes. It? Okay. Yep. All right. Last slide. Same thing. Find the x. The, find the inverse. So for the first one, I'm going to. Change this. I'm going to skip the y and go right to switching. Log base 3 of log base 4 of x. Now what? A oh, y. Sorry. Yeah. So you can't, you mean you get rid of it or cancel out? Bye. Okay, so we're going to take this as though that was like some. We're not even looking at that yet. We're taking care of this log first. And to take care of this log, we're going to make 3 come over and pick up the x. Is that what you mean? Yeah. 3 to the x equals, now this log is gone, log base 4 of y. Have we isolated the y yet? No. no. I have another log, which means I have another exponential switch. Y, I mean the 4 comes over and picks up the 3x. Does it mean 4 to the 3x? Yep. Those are the same things, right? Because a power to a power gets multiplied together. So now my last step is f negative 1 of x equals, and I would simplify it and write it as 3x. It would be 4 to the 3x. So two logs means two exponential functions changes. All right, last one. Now it starts exponential, which means I'm going to have to bring in the log, right? So I start by x equals 5 to the 2y. How do I get that exponent out? Log both sides. What kind of log am I going to do? Base five. Log base 5. So log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 5 to the 2y. And log base 5 of 5 cancels out. 2y equals log base 5 of x. And divide by 2. Divide by two. And I get y equals log base 5 of x over 2. Do you normally see a log over a number? No. How else can I rewrite that? Subtract. Well, dividing by 2 is the same thing as what? Multiply by Multiplying by a half. So I would rewrite this as f negative 1 of x equals 1 half log base 5 of x. Yep. Um, I actually don't know if that would be an equivalent thing. They'd, they'd be like, these are equivalent, so they both count. On a multiple choice, you wouldn't see it. You would only see the second one. So it's only when it's a log over a log, it becomes subtraction, right? Correct. Which And that's, again, like that's an, it, it is something that we did in Algebra 2, but that's part of Friday's lesson. So something else, we have to multiply it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. One-fourth. Correct. Yep.